Yes, as said in the previous video, we shall be learning about the new terms which we study, new scientific terms which we study in this chapter. Right? First is chromosome. I think you all know about chromosome. It is a thread-like structure in the nucleus of a cell formed of DNA which carries the genes. You see here in the upper blue structure that is called as a chromosomes. On these genes will be present at a particular location. These genes are carried to the next generation from parents. Gene, it is a unit of DNA on chromosomes. It is a unit of DNA on chromosomes which governs the synthesis of one protein that controls a specific characteristic of an organism. For example, just as discussed in the previous video about hair color carries one pair of genes that is one character or trait, eye color, skin complexion, ear lobe, or else nose, lip color, all these are nothing but traits, okay? These are carried by genes which are located on the DNA of chromosomes at a particular location on a locus that is called as locus. Genes are actually units of heredity which transfer characteristic from parents to their offsprings during reproduction. Next, dominant gene and recessive gene. Dominant gene is the gene which decides the appearance of an organism even in the presence of an alternating contrasting gene. See here, for example, um, if your father have white, white skin complexion and your mother has dark skin complexion, okay? Your father's is a dominant gene and your mother's has become a recessive gene. So, okay, if these two together, is formed in your cell, in your body cell. So dominant, which is dominant, appears in the next generation, in the offspring, okay? So that means you also will be colored or else your skin complexion also will be fair. Okay, understood now? This is called as a dominant gene. The dominant gene only can decide the appearance of an organism. This is about dominant gene. Recessive gene actually though it is present in the cell or in the embryo or else in, um, in, in the offspring, but it doesn't show any appearance at all. It is called as a recessive gene. It is represented by the corresponding small letter usually. Genotype is nothing but it is the description of genes present in an organism. Description of genes present in an organism is called as a genotype. Phenotype is, it is a characteristic which is visible in an organism, phenotype. By seeing, you can see that whether it is a dominant character or recessive character, you can show that by phenotype. Genotype means genes, which, can, which we cannot see through our naked eyes. But phenotype, we can see whether it is tall or short, uh, black or white, like this, okay? F1 generation. When two parents cross to produce offsprings, their offspring is called as first generation. When two parents cross with each other, the generation which comes as a result is called as a first generation. Second generation is when the first generation of springs cross among themselves. So the first generation of springs, the children which have been formed in the first generation, they cross among themselves to produce the F2 generation. This is called as a second filial generation also. Okay, this is called a second filial generation. So what we have discussed till now is what is meant by chromosome, what are genes, genotype, phenotype and then first generation or first filial generation, second filial generation. These are the terms which were used by Mendel. This is also called as the father of genetics. Now let us see his experiments, how it has evolved genetics as a subject. Gregor Johann Mendel was the first scientist to make a systematic study of patterns of inheritance which involved the transfer of characteristics from parents to progeny. He was only the first scientist. Mendel chose pea plants for studying the inheritance because pea plants had a number of clear-cut differences which were easy to tell apart. He took pea plants. You might have observed pea plant in your garden, right? For example, tall and dwarf pea plants. Some pea plants produce round yellow seeds while others produce wrinkled green seeds. 
some will produce wrinkled green seeds and some produce round yellow seeds these are round yellow is dominant whereas the wrinkled green is recessive another reason for choosing pea plants was that they were self pollinating first reason is they were self pollinating as well also mendel chose pea plants because many generations of pea plants can be produced in a comparatively short time span and their study is much simpler than that of animals animals compared to animals it was comparatively easy so that is why this was advantages why he took pea plant is they were self pollinating and it took less time to produce uh, fruits to produce the fruits or that peas for it. and also the clear cut difference will be there among the dominant as well as the recessive characters that is why he took he selected pea for his experiments pea plant for his experiments in that he got he studied two laws two laws first law is law of segregation and second law is law of independent assortment let us see what is law of segregation mendel's first law of inheritance or the law of segregation the characteristics or trait of an organism are determined by internal factors which occur in pairs only one such factor can be present in a single gamete so what is he saying if you look at the picture then you can understand first one is a tt this t represents a tallness tall capital t is a dominant gene whereas a small t is a pure dwarf plant both if both recessive genes are present in a cell then what will happen it obviously appears dwarf if capital t if both capital t's are present it is a dominant character that means it appears tall in nature we are studying about pea plant now so generation how this generation has come see he has uh, aparted two t's here two are dominant of course here two are in the pure dwarf plant two are recessive composition of gametes if you cross fertilize what will happen after cross fertilization one dominant trait as well as another recessive trait will be there so what did i say in the beginning video whether it is dom whether it is dominant character one at least one trait is there then the coming off spring will be dominant only for example if you take one capital t one one small t the generation will be tall okay so he has separated these gametes again and if you these this first generation has been crossed among themselves if they they cross with each other this comes as second generation in this out of four out of four offspring three will be tall and one will be dwarf this is called as a second generation or f2 generation so what he has taken is flemendel's first uh, a uh, law or remendel's law of segregation says that the characteristic or trait of an organism are determined by internal factors which occur in pairs which occur in pairs that means whether at one dominant and one recessive is there the coming of spring will be dominant only if both dominants both dominant characters are present in that particular cell to the offspring then it becomes dominant if both recessive characters are there then it becomes then the offspring becomes recessive that's what he is saying is in his law of segregation only one such factor can be present in a single gamete such factor can be present in only a single gamete this is about law of segregation law of segregation means work combining with each other in the next video we shall see what is the other law which has been developed by this mendel